everyone, good day and welcome to a new episode of Surprise Guest with Pia Arcangel where each and every episode is one big surprise. And that's exactly what's going to happen today. For this particular episode, hindi pala ako bibigyan ng clues para mahulaan kung sino ang guest natin. So it's all up to me kung paano ko siya mahuhulaan. So ako na lang magtatanong. Sana yung sagot ng guest natin ay puro pawang katotohanan lamang. <laughs> Okay, kasi ilang beses na akong naloko dito. <laughs> Alright, um, hi surprise guest, how are you today? Mayap naman. Medyo mauran, mm. pero ako, ay na akong manina, no? Ay, nako, grabe. Hindi ko na kailangan magtanong ng iba pa. Boses pa lang, kilala ko na kung sino ating surprise guest. Partner, ikaw ba yan? Hi, Ivan! <laughs> What took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> eh, kasi hindi hello, ko hello, na magkinahan hello. yung una mong sinabi. Yeah. Oh, kapapangan yun, di ba? Wow, wow, wow. Mm. Wow, wow. Oh, Pero sabi ko, nga, sa sabi ko nga sa, sa kanila, sabi ko boses pa lang. Kasi, I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, two days, to be exact. <laughs> Ang haba kasi ng two days, di ba? <laughs> Ang haba ng two days, baka makalimutan mo na yung boses ko. Eh. Anyway. Oo nga. Hello, Uy, hello, I'm hello. so happy. I'm so happy na ikaw ang surprise guest. Alam mo, matagal ko na sinasabi sa kanila, pwede ba natin i-guest si Ivan, please? Oo, oh, diba? kasi marami naman tayong kwentuhan in between gaps sa 24 oras, di ba? Pwede bang yun yung pag-usapan sure, natin? <laughs> There are things that you can only tell your close friends. Nah. <laughs> Uy, I'm, ano, I'm part of the CF. Alam mo ba kung ano yung CF? Close friends, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sa ano yun, di ba? Sa so, inner circle. <laughs> Ay, wow. Ang alam ko lang CF kasi sa Instagram, CF. Pag naka-green, o, oh, di ba? Oh, wait. Oh, sige, Ivan. I've always told you this, di ba? I'm not sure if you remember, pero ilang beses ko na sinabi to sa'yo na parang pagpasok ko sa GMA, ikaw yung isa sa mga una nakilala ko dahil sa, hindi dahil lang sa flash report, kundi dahil sa splash report. Kasi di ba ikaw yung ano, ikaw yung sinuspoof ni na Michael V sa Bubble yes, Gang. Yes, yes. Si Submarina. Ivan, Submarina, oh. oo. Pero, sige, kwento mo naman sa amin. Flash report ba yung unang salta mo sa GMA? Hindi naman. Hindi naman. Uh, although, it came immediately after Unang Hirit. My first entry into television really was Unang Hirit. I was doing sports and travel segments at that time some 23 years ago. <laughs> I was actually hired I was actually hired to be an SP, segment producer, na on-cam host then for sports and travel segments. Not really hard news. So, ah. dito ko lang simula talaga. And then, shortly after, nagkaroon ng vacancy for Flash Report Anchors. At that time, it was called GMA News Live. So, nag-audition ka? Nag-audition ka for that? Wait. Good question. I don't remember. Oo. May VTR Parang, pa ba yun? I think so, yeah. Tapos, pinag-practice din ako ng ano doon eh. How to operate your own prompter. Kasi that... <laughs> <laughs> Naabutan mo yun? <laughs> Naabutan ko kasi yung manong-manong ikot ng prompter. Eh. So, yun. Pinag-practice ko yun uh, for... For a few rounds, bago ko siya nagkawa ng tama. Yun pala yung start mo. Yes. Uh, Una, UH, which of course, for a while you left UH, pero bumalik ka, di ba? Yeah, I still, yeah. Mm. Ito, curious ako. Kasi, um, okay. so when you started, when you started, did you really want to do news? Kasi sabi mo, sports yung una mong assignment. Did you want to do hard news from the beginning? To be honest with you, I did not. Kasi, in fact, College of Mass Coma ako sa UP, but I did not choose journalism or broadcasting. I chose research because it was among the four majors uh, College of Mascom, it was the path to a corporate job. That's the path I chose. Four majors, by the way, broad, journalism, film, and then research. Doon ako sa research pumunta. Dahil I never really saw myself doing the news or being a reporter for that matter at that time. Kaya hindi ko siya talaga, hindi ko siya inasinta, kumbaga. It wasn't what I was aiming for. But then, one thing led to another. I did TV, I did features. And then the opportunity came to do news. Initially, sa studio lang muna. And then, ayun, napadpad ako sa mga actual coverage na little did I know, magiging historical events pala. 23 years after, here I am, covering Malacanang. <laughs> Ayun. Wait, ano bang first ano mo? First big story, first big assignment mo? The, there, the, the, the Edsa Tres. Edsa first, Tres in wow. 2000. Yeah, that was my first big coverage. I wasn't even supposed to be there. Kasi mm-hmm. it was a big news day, understandably. Kasi may, may malaking rally ng mga pro-era sa Malacanang and in other places. So all hands on deck, lahat dineploy. Kahit yung mga hindi regular reporters. Ako noon... Originally, ang duty ko, ano lang, uh, flash report lang, studio. After my duty, pinalabas ako, pinag-cover ako. Maghahatid lang dapat ako ng mga video ko sa 
set up natin sa Menjola. Mm-hmm. And it was then that Jiggy got hit by by a rock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so injured Oh, yeah, I remember that. So, oh. Yeah. Yung PM natin, yung production manager natin, inabot sa akin yung mikropono, mag-report ka. Mm-hmm. Report po, ano nakikita mo? And then Mike Enriquez at the time was on board the studio. He pretty much guided me kung ano yung mga dapat kong i-annotate. Kung ano yung mga ano nangyayari dyan, ano nakikita mo sa paligid mo, ano naririnig mo. Mm-hmm. Yun ang my, my first big story. Grabe, I didn't historical. know na oh, oh, Ed Satres pala yung first mo. Kasi Ed Satres, parang hindi pa ako nagtatrabaho. Na. What were you doing in 2001? <laughs> <laughs> Naghahanap pa ng trabaho. Hindi <laughs> naman nag-aaral, uh-huh. naghahanap ng trabaho. Pero, yes, yes. At least hindi ka naman high school. Ay, hindi naman, hindi naman. <laughs> Pero teka, so after that, the Ed Satres, I'm sure may kasama Eh, medyo may kasamang nervous tsaka ka ba yun? Diba? What a big story. Tapos, uh, first time mo pa to do really hard news. Tapos, kailangan mo mag-annotate live. More than the nervous, actually, it was fear not for my safety but fear of not knowing what I was doing. Kasi <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Teka muna. I didn't sign up for this. Nobody taught me how to do this. Bakit ako nandito bigla? At, at something so important. Parang, I was more afraid to be inadequate, to fail at the task at hand. Mm-hmm. Pero like I said, ginayad ako ng studio anchor, Mike Enriquez And then yung mga tao doon, the production team And then I guess, you know, like I always tell students Pag tinatanong ako, journalism is really about storytelling So mm-hmm. ikwento mo, tell them what you hear, what you see, what you smell, what you feel That's a good start That's exactly what I did on that day I, I, I guess it worked dahil umulit naman sila Inassign ako ulit sa mga iba. <laughs> <laughs> so mga ibang story, ah. you, you never really know what you're capable of doing unless you, you're thrust into it. Sometimes even when you're not ready. And no turning back. Pero wait, sabi mo kasi yung course you decided on or the track you chose mm. was parang, so it would lead you to a corporate path. Nag-corporate work ka, di ba? I remember you telling yeah, me this. I, I did. I was with an Ayala company mm. after graduation. It was a good first three years of my working life. Ang babaw ko lang naman kasi noon eh. Alam mo, pangarap ko noon. Pagka-graduate ko, gusto ko magtrabaho sa Makati na nakakurbata ako at naglalakad ako sa Ayala Avenue. <laughs> it didn't matter where. It didn't matter how much I got paid. Pero, well, siguro, swerte lang din talaga. I landed a job, uh, management training job at an Ayala company. I had good training. I did sales. I did marketing. I did human resource. So, na-expose ako sa maraming mga aspeto ng operations ng negosyo. It was through that job that I was able to travel. Mm-hmm. First time ko sumakay na aeroplano dahil sa trabaho niyo. So yun, marami akong mga napuntahang lugar sa Pilipinas. It was really a good first three years. Uh, I had mm-hmm. a good path, pero yun nga, eh, something came along in GMA. So yun, ginrab ko rin. So what made you decide to apply sa GMA kung nandun ka na sa, parang you're living the yeah. dream na, na naglalakad ka na nakakurbata sa Makati? <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ko siya pinurso actually. I bumped into an old friend from, from college, from UP. She told me that there was an opening for... For someone na pwede ako, like sports and travel host. Sabi niya, pwede ka doon, try mo. Sabi ko, uh, ano ang gagawin? Basta kaya mo yon. <laughs> <laughs> no specifics, no nothing. And at that time, I was 23 years old with nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, ako sa sarili ko lang ang iniisip ko, nothing to lose. Why not? Mm-hmm. It, I mean, a, a TV job is, is something that... Anybody, I guess, would want to try out. So, tinray ko. Tinray ko naman. And, uh, you know, the gamble paid off, I guess. No looking back. No regrets. No, yep. No, no, definitely no regrets. Pero, so, hindi siguro mo pinangarap talaga nung bata ka pa na maging on-camp personality or maging no. isang journalist, di ba? Yes. So, ano yung mga pinagkakaabalahan mo nung estudyante ka pa? I mean, were you, were you an athlete? Di ba? Kasi yeah, yeah, ito, yeah. Standard, standard na tanong yan. Yes. Kapag batang ka, basketball player ka ba noon? I was. I was. Actually, ako ang team captain ng high school team namin. We varsity. Yes, varsity. <laughs> high school varsity. I, I got to play regional sa, sa for Angeles City. Uh, yun lang, yun lang inabot ko. And then, nung college kasi, hindi ko na pinursu din. Yung varsity, hindi na. Parang mm-hmm. feeling ko kasi, it was, it was too much. Hindi ko kayang balansihin yung, yung, educa- yung studies and, and then sports dahil alam naman natin yung, yung demands ng varsity, di ba? Parang mabigat sa oras, training and all that. At that time, I, I really decided to focus on on my academics. So, hindi ka na nag-try out? Hindi ka na nag, ano, nag-attempt nung college? Oh, college lang. Nung time ko kasi may, ano, parang inter-college lang. 
but not you know mm-hmm. not, not UAAP you know ah, hindi ganun. okay you had the clear goal in mind and that's what you decided to focus on pagdating ng college yes yes definitely uh, although hindi rin naman nag parang wala rin naman kasi nagkadabagsak-bagsak din naman ako kasi bulakbol din ako <laughs> Huwag <laughs> na natin ikwento yung fart na yun. <laughs> Oo nga, wag na, wag na, wag na. Yeah. <laughs> Hindi, pero sabi mo, Ivan, 23 years ka na in the industry. So, syempre, in the span of 23 years, dami mo nang nagawa, dami mo nang na-cover. And, mm-hmm. I mean, al- alam naman natin, those who've seen your TV, you've done your your fair share of covering the hard news. Tapos, mm-hmm. nag-travel show ka, Pinoy Abroad. Yes, and then, you do yes. the morning show and now you're anchoring. Among all the things you've done, parang what what for you is parang yung parang pinaka-enjoyable na hanggang ngayon to this day, parang yun yung magpapabangon sa'yo sa umaga kasi gusto kong gawin ito pagdating ko sa trabaho. Pinoy Abroad definitely was a highlight of my career so far. Unang hirit, the friendships in Unang Hirit are something that wakes me up in the morning. Dahil masaya kami, na-excite akong makakulitan ulit sila. It, it's, it's not work at all sa Unang Hirit. It's... Hindi naman sa naglalaro, pero, you know, it, it ceases to be work when you get along really well with your workmates. And then sa ano naman, sa Pinoy Abroad naman, I mean, siguro kahit sinong nakapanood ng mga episodes na yun, may ingit, di ba? Parang, wow, lucky guy. Pag anong-ganon lang sa, sa kung saang bansa, and then, yan ang trabaho niya. But, you know, aside from the, the sights and the sounds and all those enjoyable things that you do when you travel, Maraming learnings, marami kang matututunan sa mga sa mga kwento, you know, it, it widens your perspective about things about about your own life, about yourself, mm-hmm. about your work, yung mga bagay-bagay na ganyan. So marami akong natutunan sa Pinoy abroad and I'm really very thankful. Although it didn't last parang one and a half years lang, but it was a really very fruitful one and a half years of my career. Mm-hmm. And doon sa Pinoy abroad, meron ka bang mga parang napuntahan for the first time because of the show? Everything, first time. Kasi parang yung first episode ng Pinoy Abroad in Taiwan, that was my first ever trip out of the country. Oh, talaga? Yes, yes. So, okay. so yung lahat ng mga biyahe ko na yun, lahat yun first. Siguro nag, nag-ano din doon, parang nakikita rin ng viewer doon na I was looking at, I was seeing everything for the first time. Kasi talagang ano ako eh, parang wide-eyed and excited. <laughs> Nakakatawa. Nakakatawa yung show na yun. Eh, Siyempre, so parang Pinoy Abroad was more, parang more lifestyle-ish, di ba? Parang mas mas light siya. Uh-huh. Eh, how about pagdating naman sa news? Ano yung mga pinaka, I don't know, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times. I mean, we ask each other yeah. <laughs> these questions. But I mean, not siguro in regular conversation, but what's what's one coverage na talagang parang... Wow, nagawa ko yon <laughs> or napuntahan ko yon. My first real conflict coverage na talagang papapapapa, you know, yung putukan galore was the Sabuanda siege. That one was that one really stands out as uh, wow, what an experience. It was quite an experience. Nakaka-drain siya in fact after that coverage of I don't know, 10 days, 2 weeks. Mga ganun yata yung tinagal doon eh. Pero every single day, like clockwork, magagalitong oras, magkakaputukan yan, may ganito, may sasabog. And that was one coverage that I actually felt uh, fear for my safety. Mm-hmm. Dahil kasi na, naririnig mo talaga yung mga bala, dumadaan dyan sa tabi mo. And then people actually die uh, with stray bullets kahit nasa malayong lugar sila or nasa supposedly safe space sila. You mm-hmm. know, in a war zone, there's no safe space. Kaya... Anyway, ayun. So like for example, nung Zamboanga siege, saan kayo nakastation kumbaga? Nasa kampo ba kayo? No, no, no. You stay in a hotel. Pero mm-hmm. kasi yung hotel na yun, a few minutes from there, but like maybe within five kilometers, nandun na yung conflict area. Eh. Mm-hmm. So madali siyang, madali siyang takbuhin. In fact, kahit natutulog ka, naririnig mo yung putukan. Marawi was also like that. Pero ang, ang Marawi was just a totally different. Ano, but it's, it's, it's even an, another level of of uh, nakakatakot. Oh. Kasi talaga doon, parang where we were hold up, yung sa provincial capital, ilang beses yun, may tatamang bala sa pinto, mm-hmm. may tatamang mababasag na bintana ng, or salamin ng sasakyan, tatamaan ng bala. Things like those happen every day. You just really pray na huwag <laughs> sana ako matsambahan. <laughs> parang sana makauwi ako ng buo, ng uninjured. Yeah, oh. mga Eba eh, how about ano mga stories na parang yung gusto mo sana ma-cover pero hanggang ngayon hindi mo pa nako-cover, hindi mo pa nagagawa. Dream coverage. Good question. I haven't really thought about that kasi parang 20 plus years of uh, in, in this job parang I, I think I've I've seen it all pretty much. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe some some stories, like for example, yeah, mga conflict coverage. Because we have other guys, like sina Rafi, sina Jun Generation, sina Chino Gusto. Sila yung mga, ano eh, sila yung mga go-to guys natin sa mga ganyang war coverage. Maybe they've had more experiences on, on, on those types of stories. Pero ako sa tingin ko, para okay na, okay naman. Meron din kasi mga story na ayaw mo siyang, hindi naman sa ayaw, pero you would rather not cover dahil hindi ka rin masyadong confident. Baka mm-hmm. you won't be able to do the story justice and things like that. Pero so far, I'm happy where I am in, in terms of uh, what I've covered and my experiences out in the field. So, kumbaga, important rin kasi, no, as a journalist, to acknowledge yung, your strengths and your weaknesses. Diba? Parang you have to know your strengths, but you also have to know your weaknesses. Definitely. Ready ka to go cover, you know, areas of conflict, ganyan. Pero, I mean, let's say, for example, pag-covering ka ng Miss Universe, <laughs> baka mapapaisip ka ng konti, di ba? <laughs> yeah, but, um, wait. <laughs> Wait, magpapa-makeup lang ako. Wait. No, no, no. But, uh, yeah, oh, hindi ka, like, like I said, hindi ako confident i-cover. Baka hindi ko siya magawa ng maayos. Ah, okay. Doon na doon siya babalik. Eh, yung, kasi uh, as a reporter, as a journalist, gusto mo syempre, you know, you owe it to your audience to give them something worth watching. Something mm-hmm. correct, something fair, something interesting. Pag hindi mo siya magagawa ng ganyan, if you... If, sa sarili mo mismo hindi mo uh, hindi ka confident na maibibigay mo yon then put that or maybe Uh-oh. ask for time to prepare para magawa mo pa rin siya ng tama. Siyempre, I mean, you know, on a, now, di ba, you're busy covering Malacanang. It's not your first political beat. No, no, definitely. Uh, I've covered Uh-oh. that. I was also like you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> mas matagal ka though. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. So, eh, kung papipiliin ka, ano bang mas mahirap? Political beat or um, uh, conflict story? Hmm. Meron silang kanikanyan challenge. Ang political beat kasi, madali siya in the sense that you're in an air-conditioned room. You're hardly ever exposed to the elements. Mm-hmm. Walang physical harm. I mean, threat of physical harm. But kailangan may ano din eh. Uh, there's a, a certain level of aptitude mm-hmm. that you have to have to cover politics. Kasi hindi siya... Well, for one, you have to be interested in it. For another, you have to... Bear with the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know, I mean, you covered the house. <laughs> yung ano naman, yung sa, sa conflict, ayun, nandun yung physical harm. But, andun din naman yung, iba yung thrill niya eh. You know what, what journalists say? It gets your blood boiling. Or, it, you know, it's it gets your blood running. Nabubuhayan ka ng dugo. Mm-hmm. Yun yung trail naman ng conflict coverage. Maganda sana kung you know every so often mag, magbabago para you know yung variety ng ng stories nandiyan. Pero syempre you have to you have to focus on certain beats or coverage para maging para gumaling ka naman lumalim. So that's uh. what we we do at GMA. But this is the first time na na-assign ka sa Malacañang, 'di ba? Yes. Na yung talaga ikaw yung um, accredited reporter from Malacañang. Yes, this is the first time. Oh, I was I was hoping akala ko kasi before this assignment, matagal na ako walang beat eh. Akala ko parang okay, I'm done with the beats. Uh, okay general na. assignment. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, uh, Ivan, you cover Balakanyang. Uh, <laughs> oh, pero ito Ivan, hmm. um I know, syempre life is not just all about work. I mean, there are so many other things that I know keep you busy that we also like to talk about. Isa sa mga yon is, syempre, yung mga hobbies mo, di ba? Like, like biking. Kasi, ayan, nakikita ko yung bike sa likod mo. Oh, yeah. uh, ayan siya, di ba? I'm sure isa lang yan sa many, many bikes mo. <laughs> are COVID-19 vaccines safe? What is climate change? Because information is crucial, we're giving you all the facts that you need. Anong mga lugar sa Pilipinas ang COVID-free? Introducing Me to Me, a weekly explainer series from GMA News and Public Affairs. Here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to know. Watch Me to Know, available on GMA News Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Oh, pero ito, Ivan, um, I know, syempre, life is not just all about work. I mean, there are so many other things that I know keep you busy that we also like to talk about. Isa sa mga yon is syempre yung mga hobbies mo, di ba? Like, like biking. Kasi ayan, nakikita ko yung bike sa likod mo. Oh, yeah. uh, ayan siya, di ba? I- I'm sure isa lang yan sa many, many bikes mo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I-, I love two wheels, period. Bicycles, motorcycles, yan talaga yung hiling ko. Yung, yung hiling ko sa motorcycle, naman ako yan sa daddy ko. My dad 
uh, whenever possible. In fact, even if it was raining, he would just ride motorcycles. Ayaw niya nagkokotse. So yun, naman ako yun, yung kilig sa motor. Bisikleta, isa to sa ano eh. Um, you know, more than, no, not, not more than, but as much as riding bicycles, I enjoy tinkering with them. I am my own bike mechanic. So yan, pag nakita mo yung bike, may konting ano dyan, diprensa or, you know, repair. Ako lang gumagawa niyan. I don't really run to the bike shop and have things done. Grabe, so, ano ibang siya? level. Ibang level yung ano mo eh. Yung pagiging bike enthusiast, di ba? Oo, oo, oo. Yan, kind of geeky na nga eh. Pero na-enjoy ko talaga siya. That's how I tune out when I just want to run away from it all. Nax. Nax. Wait, teka, ibig sabihin yan, kaya mo mag-restore ng bike? Yeah, I, I have an older bike upstairs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, ako, yung, ako yung nag-restore na, no? Wow. Yeah. Actually, hindi ko pa nga na ano eh. Hindi pa kita na-take up on your offer na ikaw na yung magkabit ng cleats dun sa shoes ko. Yung ano? Bali lang naman yun. No? <laughs> Nalim ko sa Sabado ah. <laughs> of course. It's a few balls. I actually do, do stuff for friends. Like yung bike ni Jun Veneracion, ako nagbuo nun. Ah. Uh, yung si, si Chino, pinagbuo ko rin siya ng bike at some point. So yun, na-enjoy ko lang talaga siya. Teka, naniningil ka ba? No, yun nga eh. Ang sabi nga sa akin, bakit hindi mo siya gawing negosyo? Sabi ko, hindi obra. Kasi parang baka pamigay ko lang yung mga mga piyesa o libre ko lang yung mga yung labor. Malulugi lang. Baka ma-pressure ka. Eh, tsaka diba, so diba kanina sabi mo, Ivan, parang pangarap mo was um, naglalakad ka sa Mahati na nakakorbata, diba? <laughs> Pero ngayon, the dream that you're living up, nagbibisikleta ka ng naka-Amerikana papunta sa office, diba? Very New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, you know that well. Yun talaga, malapit lang naman kasi talaga. Mas mabilis pa ako makakarating kung magbabike ako kaysa kung magkukotse. Kasi, you know, magkukotse ka, magpapark ka pa and all that. Eh, pag bisikleta, as in right outside the dressing room natin, nandun na yun. Oo. And then, tsaka, eto sabihin ko dun sa mga um, nakikinig sa atin, tsaka those who are watching um, on video, uh-huh. na si Ivan, talagang kahit umuulan, magbabike pa rin yan. <laughs> Magkukotse lang siya kapag delubio levels na talaga. Uh-huh. <laughs> yung may kasama hangin ulan na talagang basang-basa ka na, hindi mo na mabablow dry yung polo mo. <laughs> kasi ang bilis, di ba? Nakakatuwa kasi pag Naiisip ko na less than five minutes nasa studio na ako uh, from, galing sa bahay. So, eto mga, so sabi mo, naman mo from your dad itong love for bikes, your love for two wheels. Um, mm. Napasa mo ba to sa mga anak mo? Any of your kids? Unfor- no, unfortunately not. Si, well, si Elias kasi, he's a teenager. Yung my eldest, Elias, is a teenager now. Paiba-iba pa ng trip eh. Dati, nag-basketball yan. And then, nawala yung hilig. And then, nag-bike din. For a while, and then ngayon naman, K-pop. Ay, pa, wow. Pa yung, ano nila. But I'm not giving up. Hopefully, <laughs> when <laughs> in a few years, baka mahiligan niyo yung bike, makasama ko siya mag-bike. Si Vera sometimes rides, pero wala eh. Hindi na, na, not at the level na yung isasama ko talaga sila sasama sa akin. Oh, very teenager, di ba? Very teenager pa yung mga hilig nila. E sa bagay, ikaw, what were you doing nung teenager ka? Kaya nga eh. Iba-iba rin naman. Eh. Nagigitara, yan. Yan yung... Uh... yan yung Nung, nung teenager ako. And I want to make talent. You know, that's how you make pakyut sa mga classmates mo. Ano, <laughs> ano, eh, diba? Gitara ka. Pag, mag- gitara, pag kumakanta ka, nagigitara ka. Yun. Oh, kasi plus how many pogi points <laughs> din yun, diba? Pogi points yun, yes. Oo. At saka sasabayin mo pa ng kanta. Uh, no, I never really got to play and sing. Hindi ako, well, hindi ako confident. Ah. Siguro if I, if I had uh, tried harder, baka natuto ko, pero hindi, okay na ako sa tugtog. So, ini-imagine ko, ano eh, ini-imagine ko ang um, teenage version of Ivan Marina. So, <laughs> nagbabasketball ka, okay, yes. diba? Nasa varsity ka, tapos nagigitara ka. So, I'm assuming marami kang naging girlfriend nung high school ka. <laughs> 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 diba ganun yon <laughs> I had one serious girlfriend nung, nung high school ako. Wow. Uy, sinagot mo talaga? Minsan yung iba kasi hindi nila sinasagot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's part of who we are now. Nax. Oo, uh, nax. Diba? Yung mga uh, life experiences natin. Uh, th- th- these are really fun memories that uh, I can talk about. Uh. Mm-hmm. And this was, of course, in Pampanga. Kasi doon ka lumaki, yes, diba? Yes, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oo. Ikaw ay isang proud kabalen. Wow. Very proud. Wow. Pag maragol ko. Oh. At hanggang ngayon, lagi ka umuwi. Ay, sorry. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag maragol ko. Pinagmamalaki ko. Ah, Nax. Oo, oh, umuwi, umuwi ako regularly. Every other week. Mga ganon. Mm-hmm. Visit sa mom ko and my, my siblings. All of them are still there. Uh, mm-hmm. Nagbabike ako sa Clark. Kasi magandang bike path ng Clark eh. Kaya, oh. uh, ayun. 
And I know na, di ba, you only came to Manila kasi mag-aaral ka na for college. Yes, yes. Uh, until high school, doon ako nag-aaral. Tapos, yun nga, uh, nag-UP na nung college and then dito na ako nag Oo. So, okay. let me, ano yung mga parang favorite memories mo of growing up in Pampaga or yung mga experiences na talagang tumatak sa'yo? Ay, nako. How, where do I even start? I, I had a really happy childhood. The typical provinciano life. Uh, umakit sa puno, naglalaro sa kalsada. And Pampanga, we had all these traditions. Uh, yung Holy Week, Semana Santa, yan. Marami kami mga ano, ganyan. Tuwing Pasko, yung mga kakanin. We had mm-hmm. these traditions na nag, kami mismo nagluluto ng kalamay namin. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fiestas. And, you know, typical things that... Uh, 90s kids did. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know. Marami, marami kasing mga bagay na 90s yan, ganyan. Yung mga, yung mga laro na, ng mga panahon na yon, Yung mga banda. I, I was a regular teenager. I mean, wala akong babaguhin sa mga sa mga experiences ko while, uh, while a kid growing up in Pampanga. Mm-hmm. And then, pinatubo. 1991. Oh. Pang isa pang hindi malilimuta experience. I mean, we were a direct hit nung eruption na yun, di ba? Sambales and Pampanga yung mga direct hit. I remember that day, it was June 15, 1991. Very vivid the memories ko ng araw na yun. Kasi it was high noon, pero it was pitch black. Dahil umuulan na ng buhangin. Dahil nag-erupt na nga yung pinatubo. Hindi ko rin makalimutan yun kasi debut yun ng kapitbahay namin. We were supposed to go party. So, nakaset up yung mga party, yung party party. And then, it, yun nga nangyari. Kawawa naman. But anyway, it was dark the whole day and uh, through uh, up until midnight when we had to climb up our roof dahil kailangan na namin tanggalin yung mga natambak na buhangin. Kasi mag-cave in na yung namin eh. So we we had shovels in hand and nakikita mo yung yung eruption no? parang red lightning. Yung ganyan ko sa dinidescribe parang pul- pulang kidlat yung nakikita mo coming off uh, oh. out of pit. Ganyan yung nakikita namin. No? Tapos yun non-stop na ulan ng buhangin. And then the day after when it was all over nakita mo na yung devastation. It was we, we were one big desert. Oh, so wait, nasa loob lang kayo ng bahay. Yeah, nasa loob lang kami ng bahay. Sarado lahat ng bintana, ganyan. Yes, yes. So, it, it, it was a pretty scary time. Pero, yeah, we pulled through. Mm-hmm. Looking back um, at your at your childhood, were there instances, like, kumari yan, that, I mean, that was such a big story. Parang, in, mm-hmm. did you ever think, parang, were, was there, you know, just a little, parang, speck in your mind na parang naiimagine mo na one day magre-report ka ng something like that? <laughs> no. Wala talaga. No. Ang, ang naiisip ko lang talaga, no? sabi ko, Paano kami ba, how, how does a town or a city recover from this? How do we mm-hmm. rise from the ashes, literal ashes that covered us? Kasi parang it was so desperate and hopeless at that time. Pag, kung makikita mo siya, nakaka, ano siya, nakakalungkot siya na nakaka-hopeless. Literal, <laughs> ano mag, mm-hmm. mangyayari sa atin ngayon? Tapos mm-hmm. syempre gusto mong pumasok. Kasi mula lang ng classes na eh. Parang first or second week lang yata ng pasok ko And then wala na naman kami pasok. But you know, it, it showed you how resilient people are. More, more so Filipinos or Kapampangans. Kasi yung mga Kapampangans who lived through it, we are actually proud of that and how we rose from the ashes. Mm-hmm. Parang we, we, we rose even better and stronger. And if you see Pampanga now, talagang napaka, no? Ma, na, nakaka-proud, <laughs> sabi nga nila. Ang galing, ang galing. Paano siya nakabangon? And it's so nice event to know na parang kahit na you're so busy, di ba? Parang Monday to Friday, meron kang unang hirit, tapos magko-cover ka. And then Saturday to Sunday, mer- meron pa tayong news on sat- on weekends. Pero nakaka-uwi ka pa rin ng Pampaga, which means na parang you have that that ability to balance, to juggle um work and family. I try. I try. Kasi ano siya, importante siya sa akin. I, I grew up in a very close-knit family kaming magkakapatid, very, very close to this day. Yung, yung ate ko na nasa abroad, yung panganay namin, pero we, we keep in touch regularly. I know what's happening with them. They know what's happening with me. And yun, ganun din kasi yung gusto kong, that's the family I want to build myself. Na mm-hmm. We stick together. We we go back. Kahit saan man kaya tayo mapunta, andyan yung connection. Ay, hindi yun pwedeng mawala. And also, my roots in Pampanga, it's, you know, eventually gusto ko pa rin doon mag-retire. It's still home to me. Kahit sabihin mo nang dito na ako nakasettle, this is where I work, I have, I live here. Pero 
eventually, dun pa rin ako magsasettle. Oh, at saka, hindi na rin ganun kahaba yung biyahe, di ba? Minsan, kung nakuha yes. mo sa akin, parang ilang oras lang ang biyahe mo. Kung kotse, <laughs> kotse medyo matagal. Mga one and a half, sometimes two hours pag matraffic. Pero pag motor, mabilis talaga. Pero so, how would you describe yourself um, you know, outside the newsroom? Because, di ba... I'm sure you get this a lot na parang pag nakakilala ka ng mga tao sabi nila ay para ibang-iba ka pala sa TV kasi sa TV seryoso kasi yun uh, yung image lagi ng news anchor diba? ng reporter uh, uh, seryoso so how would you describe yourself behind the camera or off cam at home? I, I, I'm, I'm a pretty ano ba? I'm not Pretty as... boy <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pretty boy <laughs> Well that too Nah <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then. For a TV personality, I'm someone who likes to keep to himself. Halimbawa, yung weekend ko, mas gusto kong magsolo, tinkering with bikes, or washing my own car, or mas gusto ko yun. Kasi mga public events na magpupunta sa ganyan, ganyan. I'm not really into that anymore. At least these days, hindi na ako ganon. Also, I'm, I'm a regular guy. Like I said, batang pampanga, laking pampanga, umuwi ng pampanga regularly. Doon, doon ako bumabalik eh. I, I'm very much connected to my roots. That's something that will remain. My closest friends, yung mga naging friends ko sa pampanga. Of course, I have friends in at work. Kayo and the guys I work with. Pero yung mga talagang pinaka-close ko yun. Yung pa rin yung mga ano. Ganda no, no? Yung kapag yung high school barkada mo, sila pa rin yung barkada mo hanggang ngayon. Oo eh. Tapos yung, yung usapan nyo, ganun pa rin. Kahit paulit-ulit, <laughs> tawa pa rin naman kayo ng tawa. And then you call it the same names you, you <laughs> did from, from back in the day. Nakakatuwa lang, nakakatuwa. Yun ang binabalik-balik ako. Eh, parang pag nakita kayo, parang walang nag-iba in a span of how many years. Ganun pa rin. Uh, Oo, oh, ganun Uh-oh. pa rin. Kaya yung itsura namin, parang kahit sabihin mong nabawasan ng buhok niya, lumaki na siya niya. Pero tingin ko sa kanya yung kengkoy-kengkoy pa rin na high school barkado. Ganun pa rin, ganun din naman sila sa akin. Pagkausapin ako parang pagdating sa TV, pina, pinakikinggan, pinaniniwalaan ako ng mga tao. Parang kung bastusin mo ako, ganun ganun <laughs> Well, that's how it is. Ganun talaga eh. Kasi kung oh. ano yung personality mo ng high school, yun, yun ang tumatak na talaga eh. Wala Pero ka I love choice. it, I love it. Oh. Oo. It, it, it keeps you grounded rin, di ba? Yeah, definitely. Tsaka yun nga, the, the moment you take yourself too seriously, wala, it takes away the the, the fun in a lot of things. So, let, let it go. Nakaka, nakakatuwa pa rin. Oh, well, at since ang uh, eto nga nang pinag-uusapan natin na parang iba yung off-cam personality. Nako, eh syempre, we won't let that pass without um putting it to the test. <laughs> na Ken Koy ka pala talaga in uh, in real life. <laughs> in every episode kasi we always have like a special game for whoever our surprise guest mm-hmm. is. So, basahin ko ha kung ano yung mechanics. This is a big surprise. Okay, that's big surprise. Kasi nga surprise, hindi ko alam na ikaw yung guest natin. Biglang news anchors tayo, pareho. Okay. I challenge you. Ay, wow. I like that line. I challenge you. Deliver the news with a straight face at hindi tumatawa. And these headlines are taken from Pinoy jokes ni... Paano ba ito i-pronounce? Sel- Selenste? Selenste? Of Wattpad and FilipinoRambler.com. Ayan. Okay, so makikita natin Ivan sa chat box. Ha? So dito lalabas ang, ano mo, ang script mo. At kailangan mo siyang i-deliver with a straight face. Ayan. Kasi ba? alam mo, na, nahuli ka na bang tumatawa sa si ere? Almost. Pero hindi pa. <laughs> Almost. Hindi pa yung talaga, hindi pa. Yung talaga hindi mo makontain. Uh, wala, wala pa hindi naman. Pa naman. Hindi pa. Hindi pa okay, naman. sige. Hindi pa yung talagang mapaviral ka tapos mapapameme na lang. Okay, sige. No, no, no. Okay, so, okay. Uh, basahin natin. Nakikita mo ba ang ating chat box, Ivan? Uh, All right. When you're ready. Take it away. Narito mga nagbabagang balita ngayong gabi. Entrance. Pinaso. Invisible man. Nakita rin sa wakas. Isa na naman bagyo. Papalapit sa Pilipinas pero hindi raw nakarating dahil masama ang panahon. Basurero nagsampan ang kaso. Binasura. Isang bata tumalo sa sapa. Natagpo ang basa. Cemeteryo na sunog lahat patay. Factory ng katol. Nilala mo. Tindera na suka. Tinoyo. Teacher nagkamali. Tinuruan ng leksyon. Blood bank hinoldap ng dugudugo gang. Tindera ng sili. Nagpalitan ng maanghang na salita. At dalawang kalbo. Nagsabunutan dahil nag-aagawan sa suklay. <laughs> Grabe, si Ivan, oh, ni bakas ng ngiti, wala. Very professional. Napaka-pro ni Ivan. Grabe. Pero may, may mga ano ah, may mga, 
Well, most days, okay naman ako, kaya ko siyang isuppress. Oo. <laughs> Pero talaga mga araw na parang ticklish ka lang. Di ba? Parang, <laughs> parang konting joke, tawa ka lang ng tawa. I Lalo know. na sa unang hirit, di ba? Lalo, tapos may susan ng Rikas sa, sa tabi mo. Nako po. Ay, nako. Pero galing kasi... dito, ah. Witty tong nagsulat dito, ah. Oo, galing. ang galing, ah. Pero ano, magaling lang talaga si Ivan sa kanyang poker face. <laughs> dahil, ah, 23 years na niyang ginagawa yan. Saka, alam mo dati sa UH, sasadya, nananadya talaga sila. Napapatawarin Ryan, ka? Ryan nag-unsilyo at that time. Tatabi sa prompter mo, tapos we will make faces, uh, sasayaw, kung ano nung gagawin. Talaga, patatawarin ka. Oh, hindi ka bumigay? No. No, no, no. Wow. Tapos sa mga din yan. Isa ko sa mga matibay dyan. <laughs> Nako. Hindi talaga uubra sa inyo yung headlines na to. <laughs> Pero ang galing na to ha. Ang galing. <laughs> <laughs> witty siya, di ba? Witty. Pero syempre, Ivan Marina with his 23 years of experience, talagang di pa kakabog. <laughs> Uy, yeah, nako, Ivan. Right, right. Ivan, thank you so much ha, for saying yes to surprising us on this special episode. Pero syempre, Do before we go... PR kang hell. Hede, pero Ivan, ito, seryoso. I mean, marami ang uh, tumitingala sa'yo, literally and figuratively. <laughs> Dahil uh, syempre para napapanood ka nila sa TV at maraming mga gustong sumunod sa yapak mo. So what is something that you want to say to those who want to be a journalist like you someday? And syempre to all our loyal kapuso viewers na talagang tumututok sa balitang iniahatid mo. Unahin natin yung mga gustong maging journalist. If you're here to be sikat or to be mayaman, forget it. It doesn't necessarily follow. Truth I, lang. <laughs> ito, ito kasi, ano, I look at journalism more as a vocation. Kasi para ano siya eh, malaking responsibilidad siya. Imagine yung sasabihin mo, paniniwalaan ng tao at gagamitin basihan sa mga decisions nila. Some daily decisions, some major decisions, pero ganun ka nila pagkakatiwalaan sa mga sinasabi mo para ibasi nilang decision nila doon. So, you have to take it very seriously. You have to commit to it dahil hindi siya madali. It's a jealous mistress ikaw nga nila mm-hmm. yung professional journalism. So, make sure you you are all in bago mo ipurso yung yung journalism. It has its rewards, definitely. So, you just have to put in the work and the, the rewards will come soon enough. And then, sa mga kapuso viewers, maraming maraming salamat. Of course, GMA has been very good to me all these 23 years. I mean, what can I say? Everything I have Everything I am now, I pretty much owe to GMA. So, yun. Maraming maraming salamat sa suporta ng ating mga mananood. And of course, you can expect the same commitment that we have given all these years na bibigyan namin kayo ng mga balita na walang pinikilingan, walang pinaprotektahan. You know, we, we say that all the time, pero we really mean it. We are serious about it. We are committed to that mission, to that promise sa ating mga viewers. Maraming maraming salamat. And partner, thank you very much for having me. It was, oh, uh, thank you. Para lang naman ano, para lang siya mahabang gap na kwentuhan, di ba? Oo nga. Ganun na nga. Pero pa- parang mas ano no, mas refined lang ng konti. <laughs> Oo oh, naman, hindi tayo pwedeng maging ano, yung mga, you know. <laughs> may image pa, may image yeah. na pinoprotektahan. Oh, <laughs> let's uh, yeah, let, let's save that for the uh, no, for the gaps uh, on weekend. <laughs> Eva, thank you so much. Thank You're you, welcome. thank you for thank being you with much. us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This surprise was planned by the team of Alan Ebora and Orbi de los Reyes, edited by Shirley Pagiligan, with the wonderful people of GMA Integrated News. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Till the next surprise!